There are two categories of fuel senders that we're going to talk about. The mechanical type and the electronic type. Let's first focus on the mechanical fuel sender options you have available. Here is a typical example of a mechanical float fuel sender unit that you can use in your aircraft. Now this began its life design in automobiles of yesteryear. The benefits are that it is very simple to understand. We have a float that's going to go from the bottom of the tank up to the top of the tank and as it rotates it turns a potentiometer which is a variable resistor. In other words at the low position it may be say 33 ohms and at the high position 240 ohms but this will vary from unit to unit. There's basically two connections ground and then the one terminal and this unit needs to have voltage applied to it through a gauge that is matched to this unit. In other words you need to make sure that you buy the proper fuel gauge that matches the sender unit because the resistance of the potentiometer may be different from one unit to another and may not match the gauge you have in mind. So always check the catalog to make sure you're getting a gauge that matches the sending unit. Also these sending units will work quite well with the electronic glass panels. They are typically set up to work with a potentiometer resistive type sender like this. The benefits of this sender are that they are relatively low cost. These are about thirty forty dollars somewhere in that range. There are various qualities of units and various brands. You need to kind of check around and find out what your aircraft manufacturer is using. And of course if you have a favorite fuel gauge that you want to use then you need to make sure it works with the sender that you're intending to install. Now on the downside of this is that you do need to bend this arm to make sure that the travel from bottom to top is proper for the tank you have and you need a relatively large size hole to insert this whole mechanism into. We'll take a look at that in a second. Also keep in mind that this is a mechanical component that is immersed in the gasoline. So over time, although they are actually quite reliable generally speaking, if there's water in your tank over many years things can corrode and you can get erroneous values based on things breaking down inside. So we want to install this in such a way that it can be serviced and removed if necessary. But it is simple to understand. It works pretty reliably for the most part. Here is an example of an aircraft fuel tank. Notice it has a sloping design because this one would go inside of a wing near the root of the wing. And if we were to mount the sender into a hole like this, then we have to picture the fact that it will sit about like this and notice that the float is beyond the bottom and beyond the top of the tank. So we would need to bend this arm to create the correct geometry so that at the most downward travel it is just right with the bottom of the tank and at the upward travel it is at the very top of the tank. And of course that depends on which position you have it mounted into the hole. So these come straight but you can shorten them, bend them, whatever is necessary to make sure that the travel up and down matches the tank. Also note that as far as accuracy go there may be some issue because not all tanks are parallel. Notice our top slopes so that 
there's actually more fuel in the bottom half of the tank if we look from top to bottom than there is at the top because of the slant. So our gauge may not read 100% linear, but that may not be a problem. The important thing is to know when we're out of fuel and when we're full of fuel with a hole like this. And note that these mechanical gauges come with what is actually a standard SAE pattern of the five bolts. This will actually go inside of a hole. You must cut a hole of appropriate size and it will fit inside. And then of course you can position this as necessary, keeping in mind where the float is going to be, forward, sidewards, or back, etc. Of course, I'm not showing you all of the parts. There's a gasket that goes on the bottom here and also another flange that sits underneath to capture the screws and allows us to tighten this down so that there are no leaks. Here is another mechanical option. This is a molar marine reed switch sender. The black float is really a magnet that trips a series of reed switches inside of the metal tube. Other than that, there is no mechanical connection between the float and the sender. So it is quite reliable and simple and electrically connects up and operates the same as the other sender unit we discussed. One shortcoming is that its length needs to be ordered in the proper length for your tank as you cannot cut or adjust the length of that tube. Now here is an example of the electronic fuel sender. This is a capacitive probe. This probe gets inserted into the tank. It's actually hollow and there's a wire in the very center insulated from the outer aluminum tube here and fuel will rise up this tube and a capacitive sender always has the part that goes in the gas with an electronic component. Most of them the electronic component is attached to the tube and you just install this into the tank. There are other versions where the electronic part is separated and attached with the wire to the tube. But in either case, the purpose of the electronics is to measure the capacitance between that inner wire inside the tube and the outer tube itself. Remember gasoline is, or that your fuel is either up high or diminishing down low and the capacitance changes as that fuel level changes and we now have to supply power to the electronics and ground and then have another wire that sends a small voltage typically zero to five volts to either a special mechanical fuel gauge so we can't just use any old gauge. We would have to use a special mechanical gauge like this one that is made to work with a capacitive sender. Certainly these work very well with the glass panels which are set up to detect the low voltage signal from these units. If you look at the top, we have a way to calibrate the unit with a adjustment for high level and low level so we'll adjust that with the screwdriver with our gas at the highest point and then at the lowest point so that we have an accurate reflection for the voltage reading at high level and low level. Now from an installation standpoint many of these capacitive probes can be cut to fit your tank. So obviously the length can be trimmed to match your tank. Also they can be bent again following the instructions with the probe and by bending this this allows you to install these in a tank that has some odd shape. 
so that you can still get the probe through most of the tank and be able to read the fuel gauge with some accuracy. These are also very nice because there are no moving parts to wear out. It's simply the issue of the gasoline that flows up the tube and goes down as your level changes. And as far as sloshing goes, if, if your tank allows gas to slosh as you slow down, speed up, or you bank the aircraft or pitch up or pitch down, what's nice about these probes is that the gas cannot very quickly move up and down these probes, so sloshing does not get detected. Whereas with the mechanical gauge, that float rides in real time with the level of the fuel in the tank, whether it's sloshing or not. These can also be installed in any direction. You can even install it into the side of a tank and again, bend it so that if you install this towards the top of the tank, you would bend it here so the probe goes down. And you can even install these in the bottom of the tank. So these are very nice for where you have some unique situations as far as mounting goes, where a mechanical float sensor would not necessarily work real good. Notice that the hole required in the tank for the capacitive center is smaller. This is the mounting plate with tapped holes for the mounting screws. And this would fit in like this and attaching with the screws through the center. Here are some examples of mounting the capacitive center in your wing tanks. If this were a wing and these were fuel tanks here. Here's in the side with a slight bend downward. Here's in the side at the top with a sharper bend downward. Remember our goal is to be able to read the fuel from empty to full. And in this example, we're mounting it from the bottom, in which case we don't have access to the top at all, but the capacitive center will work fine because the capacitance is still high when the tank is full and low when it's low, regardless of the orientation of the probe. If you are interested in the very latest innovation in fuel sender probes, this is the B-Lite liquid level probe. This is a high precision pressure sensor, very accurate, and it's also very small. It comes in either a quarter inch or one eighth inch NPT thread. You screw this into the lowest part of your fuel tank and hook up the three wires, just like on the capacitive sensor. It provides zero to five volts, which goes to your glass panel display and lets you know whether your tank is empty or full or anything in between. But it is certainly the simplest way to install a fuel level sensor.